thanksgiving and praise and this morning. Come on, let's give God a big shout of praise this morning for all that he has done. This is four years in the life of Generations Church. Put your hands up say four. That you are a good God. Yes. Grateful that you are a God who provides to people who sometimes, if we were just really honest, really aren't that worthy of it. But you love us anyway. Father, I pray as we go through these next few moments this morning that you would just be glorified. That you would be lifted up. That you would get all the praise. That you would get all the glory. I pray that each one of us in this room would, would not walk out of here the same way we came in. But I feel like we I pray that we would walk out knowing that we have been touched by your spirit this morning. Yes. Because you're holy. You're mighty. You're good. Yes. 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 And we give you all the glory this morning. Yes. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Of course, keep worshiping God today.
Chris for a loop, but I felt the Lord telling me to say something this morning. Last weekend, I had the pleasure of just being away with some unchurched men and some, some Christian men. And I heard a young rapper on Friday night as we began, young Christian rapper, young guy, probably 24, 25 years old of age. And he said, I lived a life of uncertainty. I lived a life of uncertainty. He said, when I flipped the light switch on, I was uncertain that the lights were going to come on. I always knew the bulb was good, but I was uncertain because I grew up in a, with just my mom, a single mom, to the point where we had to go to the gas station to get water from behind the gas station to fill the sink in the bathtub. So I lived a life of uncertainty, so how in the world can I be certain that there's a God? So maybe this morning, you could be in that same place. But this morning, we come to plead the blood of Jesus. This morning, there's power in the blood. And to hear that young man tell his story of where he was before and where he is now. It's amazing. And so this morning, maybe we've come in and we don't really see God, or maybe we think God's not there. Maybe you walked in this morning with some uncertainty in your heart. But be certain, God ain't going out of business. You don't need no coupon for God. No liquidation sale. What Jesus did on the cross for us was free. All you have to do is accept it. He did it for us. He did it for free. And we plead the blood. This morning, we're going to try a new song this morning called I Plead the Blood and just sing with us this morning. If you know it, sing it. If not, you're going to know it because it won't be the last time we do it. So sing with Amen. us this morning. Amen. He has no 
You are so amazing, so we have to praise you. We praise the Father, we praise your Son, we praise the Spirit, Lord. Thank you so much for every opportunity, good or bad. We learn from your blessings, Lord. Thank you so much for everything. Father God, I pray that we are here to open up our eyes, our mouths, and our hearts, Lord, to whatever it is we need to take in from Chris's message, Lord. I just take a deep breath to praise you, Lord. Thank you. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's give it up for the worship team one more time. Thank you guys for leading us this morning. What's up, party people? You guys doing all right? I normally call everyone party people, but it's especially appropriate this morning. Everybody put your fours up in the air. Come on, you got a hand, throw it up there. Today is our fourth anniversary. Generation Church is turning four years old this morning, and we are excited. Come on, put your hands together if you're excited for that. That's awesome. We're glad you guys are in the house to celebrate with us. We've got some free lunch after service. So if you're hungry, stay hang out, eat some food. If you're not hungry, stay, hang out, eat some food, because when there's leftover food, I have to take it home, and I don't want that much food. So please stay, eat the food, so that I don't have to take it home. I would greatly appreciate it. You'd be doing me specifically a very big favor. So please stay and hang out and have some lunch with us after service. Uh, Pastor Chris is going to come up in just a moment and uh, lead us in the word this morning. Uh, but I want to uh, direct our attention really quickly. There is a uh, QR code that's in a seat back pocket near you, in front of you. Okay, if you, uh, if it is your very, very first time, you can scan that, or you can text the word "new" to the number that is on that card. Okay, if you're looking to give, same thing. Like that will take you to all of our uh, communications here at Generations Church. Okay, if you've not signed up for a small group, you can do so there. All you need to do. We got three small groups coming up. They start this week. Okay, so if you've not signed up for a group yet, you will want to make sure that you do that this morning, okay? And if you're looking to do that, we have three of them. They're in Locust Grove, Stockbridge, and Fayetteville. All you need to do is text the name of the city to that number on the QR code that's in front of you, okay? So if you want to sign up for Locust Grove, we'll just text Locust Grove to that number. Stockbridge, we'll text Stockbridge to that number. Fayetteville, what will you text to that number? There you go. You guys are very smart. Thank you, guys. So all of that is going to be right there. Again, if you're looking to give, you can go through that route as well. So all of that information is available to you. So we are excited. I'm going to get ready to uh, pass it over to Pastor Chris. But before we do that, why don't you stand up, shake somebody's hand, tell them you're glad to see him in the house this morning. everybody. You can go ahead and make your way back to your seat. The lights are going to come down here in just a second, and we are going to have you direct your attention to the screens. Thank you so much. Jesus. Compassion. Family. Holy Spirit led. Love. Encouraging. Family. Unique. Love. Sunday morning. Youth. Joy. Jesus. Passion. Love. Acceptance. Encouraged. Abstract. Faith. Love. Fun. Patience. Encouraging. Fellowship. Caring. Devoted. Welcome. Passion. Accepting. Love. Passion. Fun. Jesus. Vulnerable. 
spiritual lifting. Giving. Friends. Fulfillment. Spirit led. Servitude. Inspirational. Community. Commitment. Good coffee. Service. Kindness. Relentless. Family centered. Family. 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 Families. Family. 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 Friendly. Family. 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 Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. How you doing? What I was going to say is we are a family of believers who multiply and mobilize people from every generation to change their world with the grace, power, and love of Christ. Amen. See, we're a family on a mission. God's placed us here, right here. And before I go any further, I always like to do this on the, on the anniversary week. I always like to recognize those who were there in the beginning. Is that okay? We have a few families who were here right from the beginning. Where's the Burns at? The Burns, Chris went to the back. He's in the back, back there. Stick your head out. Stick your bald head out here. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Chris Burns, he shaved that thing. It was turning loose, so he figured he'd help it out. Heather's back there. And they got little Hudson and little Brinson. Uh, well, you know what I mean. That's what happens when you get so many kids. You just have to go through the roll call before you get the right name. Y'all know how it is. Yeah. That's just how it is. That's how it is. And um, we had the Burns and we had the Zecklers, Joan and David Zeckler. Where are you guys? Joan's in the back today, too. She's normally up here singing. David's right there. Come on, give them a big hand. And there was another couple that was with us in the early days. And, and not long after we launched the church, it was Matt and Megan Eubank. He got, he's in the military. He got a promotion and he got transferred down to Columbus. He just got another promotion, by the way, if you didn't know, about a month or so ago. And so he's moving on. He's about as high as you can get in, in what he does in the military. And so he's, he's a great guy. And they were, they've really been helping us, support us, even since the time they've been gone. And we had a few other people who came along. We had Gary and Rhonda Price. They were there in the beginning. Beth Burns, she was there in the beginning, Chris's mama. Will you stand up? Can I, call, can I point you out? Look, this is my favorite mayor, people. <laughs> this, is, this is the mayor of Flo Villa, Georgia. Come on, give her a big old hand. In the beginning, she was one of those people who spoke faith into me. And, and when we started out on this, she gave me this picture, and I sent it to her yesterday. And I said, hey, we want to see you here today as we celebrate four years. And it said, be fearless. And so... It's good to have people who speak into your life. Isn't it great? I was looking around. The Eckerts came. Scott and Grace Eckert, they came in that first year. Daryl was there right from the beginning. And it's amazing. You got that picture? I wasn't going to go there yet, but we'll go there this morning. There's a picture we took this morning. And it's amazing what God has done from a few families and how he's grown us. And so we are a family. Say, we're a family. We are a family. A believers multiplying and mobilizing people from every generation to change their world with the grace, power, and love of Christ. And so it is our greatest desire to lead people to know Jesus. To lead people, you can take that down, people just looking at the screen instead of me. <laughs> to lead people to know Jesus, to grow in Jesus, and to go make a difference for Jesus. Jesus put us here on purpose. We're on a mission. It's so people can come to him. Last week, Mario was talking about that weekend. There were, how many people got baptized up there last weekend? Thirteen. So We didn't see it here, but we are a family on a mission. Sometimes the mission's out there. The mission isn't always in here. Matter of fact, this is just where we come to get encouraged and trained up so we can go out there. So we're called to lead people to know Jesus, to grow in Jesus, to go make a difference for Jesus. Knowing Jesus is all about trusting him as Savior and then growing in him, getting to know him better. Growing in Jesus is twofold. It's about finding freedom. See, I don't know about you. Well, I do know about you because it's true about everybody in the human condition. We all have things that we are enslaved to and chained to. And, and, and growing in Jesus is about letting go of the chains of bondage in our life. Amen. And you know how you do that? You get in community with other people. That's why we do small groups. That's why we're launching small groups this week. And, and the best way to lose the things in your life is to get connected to other people. Because when we get connected with other people, we rub against each other. And we learn from each other and we grow from each other. The second part of that, of growing, is discovering your purpose. See, God put you on here for a purpose. 
we all had different gifts. My gift isn't your gift. Your gift isn't my gift. But what's so neat is when the body of Christ comes together in unity and every part does their part, God can come in, you know, when we do everything we can in the natural, God can come in and put his super on it and we can see God do things in our midst as we learn to walk in our purpose. And then the other thing is about going out and making a difference. Like we're not called to sit here on Sundays. We need to be here on Sunday. The Bible says, do not forsake the coming together of the saints. Like, if anybody ever tells you, oh, not important. In the early church, they met every day. In our day and time, in our individualized society, we've bought into the lie that we don't need to show up. Trust me. Amen. You need to show up. Amen. We need you. And that's how we grow together. That's how we become more like Christ. See, we want Bible times. Bible times is just living according to the Bible. And there's one more thing about generations. What's the last letter of our name? Z. Z. Now, some people know what I'm going to say. There's a group of people. I ain't going to mention no names. David Zeckler started it. But... <laughs> When they introduce themselves and tell people what church they go to, they go, I go to Generations Church with a Z. <laughs> and it's become this funny thing, but that's intentional. The, the Z is on purpose. It wasn't because we wanted to spell generations and get, you know, all new age and, and, and funny and spell it with a Z. It's because we have a tendency, old folk, I'm sorry, Grace. We have a tendency seizing people. I wasn't calling her old. She usually corrects me when I say, all right, for you guys who don't know Grace, usually I'll say old folks and she'll correct me and say, seasoned people. <laughs> As we get a little older in life, in the church, we have a tendency to build things around our preferences. Yeah. We have a tendency to build things that we love. And when we build a house like that, we leave a generation behind. Yeah. So as a church... This is what we said. This is one of our values. It says, we will do everything within our power to position the next generation to go farther than us. True success isn't measured by whether or not I'm capable of handling my responsibilities. True success is measured by whether or not we leave our responsibilities in capable hands. Amen. And so we are all about the next generation. We are unapologetically all about the next generation. And I say this all the time. Actually, I stopped saying this. I'm going to say it again. You ready? Season folk, get your toe out. You got it out there? Anybody? I used to say this, and don't get offended by the first half of what I'm about to say, okay? Because <laughs> there's a second half about what I'm going to say. But I used to say, if you're here and you're over the age of 40, and I would say it with passion too, this church is not for you. Yeah. Yeah. But, you got that picture again up there, Joan? But, if you look up here and you go, man, there's something there. There's something there, there's something in there, there's something in there. There's something in here in these younger 20-somethings. If you can look into that picture and you go, there's something right there that I care about and I love and I want to make something out of, I want to help it grow, this church is the best place for you. Because you can give your life away to see another generation flourish. Oftentimes we think Moses failed in the desert. Moses didn't fail. He raised up a Joshua that went into the land. When Joshua died, the Bible says in Judges 2, 9, it says after that generation grew up to be with his parents, another generation grew up that did not know the Lord. We're all about the next generation, and we unapologetically are all about the next generation. That's who we are. Good morning. My name is Pastor Chris. Let's get to the Word. Is that okay? I'm going to go in two different passages, but I'm going to make a couple of points. Today, get your fours out. You ready? This is... Fourth year Sunday, we're starting it this year. Fourth year of Generations Church, we're going to go to Numbers. Say Numbers. Numbers. I'm going to read uh, verse 13, 20, the second half of that, and then verses 30 to 32, and then we're going to jump into Joshua. Is that good? Yes. First four words. Are they up there? No. That's not it. Put them down. That's not it. All right, I'm just going to read it to you. You can take it off. That's not what I'm reading. I don't know what happened. Be of good courage. Mm. Mm. Let me preface this before I do that. Mm. The Israelites, God had brought them out of Egypt. They were in slavery and bondage. Mm -hmm. 
And God brought them out of Egypt and they're going through the desert. They're in the wilderness. They're walking around. God has told them they're going to go into this promised land. And it's going to be a land. What was the land? It was flowing with milk and honey. God told Israel to get out and go in. He said, come out of Egypt and go into land. Egypt, the people had a different idea. They said, we need to go look and see what's going on, see if it's okay before we walk in. And so they sent some spies out into the land, and, 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 and they got into the land, and they saw these clusters of grapes that were so big that two guys could pick them up and hold them on a, on a pole and walk around with them. I'm talking about grapes. I don't know how you eat grapes like this. Maybe you got to cut them up. I don't know. But huge grapes. There was fruit in the land. It was flowing with milk and honey like God had told them. And then they came back and here's verse 30. It says, then Caleb, they're excited. Or at least Caleb and Joshua was when they got back. It says, then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession for we are able to come overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of, the, of Israel a bad report. You ever got a bad report? God told you something and then you were looking at it and you got a bad report of the land which they spied out saying that the land through which they, they, we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are great men of great stature. There we saw the giants. The descendants of Anak came from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And in their sight. And so if you know how the story goes, they didn't go into the land. Who came back and gave a good report? Anybody know? It was Caleb. Who was the other one? Anybody know the name of the other ten? A nation missed out on its calling. A generation missed out on its calling because of some people that you can't even name right now. So Moses passes away and Joshua comes on the scene. The Lord puts him in, in power. We're going to Joshua chapter 1. We're looking at verse 7 through 9. And it says this. Say, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law that my, service, my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law. Always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything that is written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I want to talk for the next 17 minutes and 33 seconds from this topic right here. Get them up. Fourth year faith. Jesus, we love you. Give us your eyes. Let us look out into the obstacles of the culture and the land that we see ourselves in and let us look past the things that are distractions. Let us see with your eyes the abundance. Let us see with your eyes the ability. To step into things. Let's see with your eyes the treasure that sits in the people around us so that as we as your church can call it out of one another so that we go into the promised land that you've promised for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. You got any bike riders out there? Any younger generation bike riders? I don't see bikes like I used to. No. Yeah. This ain't this ain't Hitting on the younger generation. Because we've ordered the next generation, right? They are expensive. Let me tell you about my experiences with bikes as a kid. I'll give you two of them. I had this. You guys, I've told you about the bike that got stolen that time. I told you it was the ugliest bike in the world. Before it ever got stolen. I was in the apartment complex one day. And I was like four years old. I was going to just jump off the curb on my bike. Well, I jumped off the curb. And the whole front spoke, the forks and everything came off the bike. And I went face first on the asphalt. And I, I was like four years old. Had a big old, it seems like forever, but it was probably a day or two. 
I had to eat, out of, eat soup out of a straw because I couldn't really open my mouth. But that was one of my first early experiences on a bike. And then another time I was riding a bike and I was in this neighborhood. I don't even know where it was. But the way I remember it, I was five or six years old. And I was, first time I ever rode a bike. You know, when you're growing up, you get bikes that's got brakes and you push back on. And then you graduate and you only got hand brakes. There ain't nothing here anymore. I was five or six years old. I was in this neighborhood. And he like, it probably wasn't like that. It was probably more like that. But, you know, five or six years old. It looked like this, and down here in the bottom, there was woods, nothing back there, and so you can see where this is going already. I'm on this bike, and I'm getting down there, I'm flying, and then all of a sudden, I start kicking back, and ain't nothing happening, and I go into the woods, and I, you know, I don't know if I hit a tree, but I can tell you, I went, bam, right into the gooseneck, you guys know what I'm talking about, of that bicycle, sorry for that, and it hurt. It did. It really, it, it, it really hurt. It really did. Yeah. Cause I had intentions. I was gonna ride that thing, yeah. and if I'd have let that experience that I had on that bicycle scare me to death, where I would stop, I wouldn't be able to ride a bicycle today. But oftentimes in our faith life, God will call us to something. And we'll start to take a few steps forward, walking into this thing. And, and, and before you know it, the enemy shows up and we get slapped in the face. We get punched in the mouth and we go, whoa, 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 whoa. Maybe you weren't even going after something. Maybe life taught you this. Maybe you were a young child and, and, and you were in just situations where you got stepped on and pushed on and pushed around. And, and you grew up feeling like you were really weren't nothing. Because what life just handed you. When you get in that place, you got a decision to make. You can accept that I'm worthless. That I really don't have what it takes to do this thing. That it might hurt too much if I go after it. Or you can look at the Word of God. And you can reframe this thing. See, the Bible is all about giving you a new identity. When you come to faith in Christ, you get a new identity. The old is gone, the new has come. Amen. We've all been made new in Christ, Amen. and we get a new identity. Yes. The problem is, we don't live that way oftentimes. And so if you want to go after the thing, the vision that God has in your life, you need to fix your focus. See, they went into the land flowing with milk and honey. And they came back and they said, oh, there's giants in the land. But God had already told them, just be of good courage. I'm going with you wherever you go. When you go in there, they had a God who already took them through a Red Sea. When it looked like it was all about to fall apart, they had a God who took them through. And they forgot who they were when they got there. Has that ever happened to you? You step out into something and it hurts. I can relate to that. We started a church five weeks before COVID. And we stepped out in faith. Bam, the world shut down. Nobody's coming to church. As a matter of fact, you can't even come to church. We had to scramble. We wouldn't be doing online probably right now if it wouldn't have been for that. But in those moments, what do you do? Do you settle in on what the world or your experiences says? Or are you going to step up and say, I'm a child of God. I'm more than a conqueror. Amen. I have everything I need to do, everything God has called me to do. Are you going to be like Moses? You say, I don't have much, but I got a stick. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to take what I got and I'm going to use it. Amen. So the first thing we need to do is we need to reaffirm our identity. We need to fix our focus. Get it up there. Fourth year, fix your focus. The next thing you need to do is you need to change your story. See, there's an enemy running around. You got a track. You got a script. You got a, something rolling in the background of your mind that's speaking to you every day. I was 28 years old and lost everything because of my own stupidity. And I felt worthless. I felt like a failure. 
And I could have let that story roll on in my ears and in my brain, and, and, and I could be here today at 49. I'm not 50 yet, people. Almost. <laughs> and I could be in a defeated place in my life right now had I not changed the story. Does the enemy tell you things about yourself? Does the enemy whisper in your ear, you're not good enough? Does the enemy whisper in your ear, you don't have what it takes? Does the enemy whisper in your ear, you're not qualified, you're disqualified? And do you believe him when he does? We all struggle with this. As I was preparing to this, I realized, I told you we started church about five weeks after, there's a script and a story that's been running in my mind for four years, and I've been telling it over and over and over. People ask about church. Yeah, we started a church four years, four, five weeks before COVID started. And I'm still telling that story today. Four years after the fact of what it was. This is fourth year, Generations Church. We're changing our story. This ain't the same story we've been living. This is the year where we step it up. And we remember God called us here. God called us here for a purpose, on purpose. To change lives. To make a difference. If he didn't want us doing that, he could just take us on home. We could stand around and sing holy, 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 worship him in heaven. And we could do that all the time. But no, he's got a mission for us. Right here. And we're more than capable of accomplishing it if we all come together in unity and follow him to where he wants us to go. I had this on the next point. So year four, fix your focus. Year four, change your story. Year four, I had fearlessly follow God's plan, but I'm going to scratch through that. <laughs> because we can't live fearlessly. We can live, we can be of good courage. Courage is just looking fear in the face and stepping into it anyway. Put another F word there. Faithfully follow God's plan. Faithfully step into what God has called you to do. You can come back, Chris. Faithfully step into his next steps for you. God doesn't always give you the plan. He'll just give you the next step. And oftentimes in our life, we'll get stuck in a place because we will not take this next step. We'll be sitting here for 10, 15, 20 years, and we go, God, what's going on? I thought you were with me. I thought you were everywhere I went, everywhere my foot treaded. And he's like, your foot hadn't went anywhere. Amen. It's just been stuck in one spot. Amen. Amen. This is pastor's frustration right here, Amen. what I'm about to say. People will tell you, you need to chase after the Lord and do what the Lord says. And the pastor will come back, the Lord says this. And well, we don't want to do that. <laughs> that might, yeah, it's too hard. It might, it might cause me to have to get up and do something. You know what I mean? Let me tell you something. This is probably why when the pastor asks you to do something, because we've all been there, that you don't want to do it because it's going to hurt. It's going to cost you something. It's going to be uncomfortable. Yeah. But see, you never grow when you're comfortable. Yeah. I know. I cut like four, uh, Adam knows what I'm about to say, four Bradford pears. My neighbor has four Bradford pears. I cut all them jokers down with a pole saw last week. And I realized... I've been wanting to do it for a while because the, the Bradford pears, they just grow really tall and they keep my grass from going. It just makes me mad. And so I got out there with my pole saw and I cut them down. And I'm not 20 anymore. And so I told Becca, I was like, I need to get out there and exercise before I grab that pole saw next time because this arm right here, it hurts so bad. <laughs> it's like one of them things you just touch it and jump and it was hurting. But that's how God's will for your life is. That's what it feels like. We bought into the lie, and God is good, and he has good things for you. And if we bought into this lie, though, that God has a wonderful plan for your life. And he does want to do great things with you. 
But it doesn't feel wonderful in the process. It doesn't feel wonderful when you when you just step out and you go with, out in faith and then you just get punched in the face as you're walking out. It doesn't feel good. You never get anywhere or do anything. You don't get ripped like Mr. Chris over here without putting the work in. I'm struggling these days. Some of you are like, me. That's why I, about a year ago I went from medium to large because the medium's just, it was looking too bad. So I got out of denial and went there. I like my arms the way they look in a medium, but not this. Anyway. Sometimes we live life in the comfort of what was slavery because we won't take the discomfort of what it takes to grow in the person, into the person and the people that God has called us to be. Faithfully follow God's plan. I ain't not got that part yet, have I? Our lead team, we sat around in our house about my house. We meet on Tuesdays. It's going to be Mondays. Now groups are starting. And we were having a conversation. It was within the last month. And we were talking. And we were like, you know, we look at our church. And, it was, and the question was this. We started putting, I like getting whiteboard. I love it. I like getting the whiteboard out and just writing it down. Because you get clarity when you just get it all out. You know what I'm saying? I love it. I could do it all day. Like if that was my job, get out there and write on a whiteboard, boy, I'd, be, I'd, be, I'd just be getting it done. I'd be a billionaire by now if that's what I did all day, but I don't. But we were getting it out. And we're like, what's one thing in our church that if it were better would make all the difference in the world? And so we started writing on there. We had worship, and we had the preaching, and we had kids ministry, and we had a welcome team, and we had all kinds of stuff just out there on the board, and we're looking at it. I wish I had a picture of it. I probably do on my phone. I could put it up there for you so it looks good. It's still on my wall. And we're like, well, do we have backdoor issues? Or like people coming in and going out the back door? And we're like, no, that's really not it. And we settled on this one thing. Like if this one thing were to improve, everything about what we do would improve. Because honestly, for the amount of people, we do a good job. We got a great team. But the one area, if it got better, would make all the difference in the world is if the front door got better. And I don't mean the welcome team. I mean the amount of people that came through the front door. See, we don't even know if we have an assimilation problem. Because there's not enough people coming in the door to make that determination. And so we said, that's the one thing. We need, we need an invite campaign. For two years, I've been saying this to you guys. Show up and serve and bring somebody with you. Can anybody quote that? Show up and serve and bring somebody with you. I'm going to shorten it for you and make it a little easier. How about that? Just show up and bring somebody. Because if we'll show up and bring somebody, the serving part will take care of itself. And so we sat around and we said, okay, here's the, we're all going to bring nine people this year to church. That's everybody in this room. If everybody in this room brought nine people with them this year, would it make a difference in the life of our church? Would it? Here's the thing. You can't market your church to growth. Marketing only makes your name available when somebody makes a personal invitation. See, we're called to go and make disciples. It's personal. It's invitational. It's one-on-one. -on -one. You may not know how to share your faith with somebody, but you keep showing up. We're going to teach you this year. That's one of the things we're going to talk about, sharing your faith. But you know how to invite somebody to church. So we said, collectively, that's what we're challenging everybody. We're going to, we want to invite Nine, or bring nine people. Not invite, bring nine people to church this year. And I went out this week, and I got these printed. I got that picture back there, Joan. There it is. That's the one side of it that says, be my guest. This is a personal invitation. You can go out. And, and then on the other side, what, where'd you go? Right here. It's got a place for prayer. They can scan that and text that in to our prayer team, and our prayer team will be praying for that immediately. And here's the thing. Here's, here's what I hear a lot. And I say this a lot. You know, once you're a believer for about two years, you won't even 
no unbeliever anymore. But you go out to eat, don't you? Carry this with you. Begin a conversation with your waiter. Hey, you got anything to pray for? Need anything to pray for? Pray with them. Leave this prayer thing upside down as you go. They may not come back, or they may not come with you. But I can guarantee you this. There's going to be a point in time in their life where they're going to need God. They're going to feel like they need prayer. And so I have 500 of these today, and I bought 500 of them, but the Lord told me that ain't enough. So I reordered. I got 5,000 of these coming for about 45 or 50 people. That's about 100 invitations for us together. And you're going to get a bag. It's got about seven or ten. I didn't have enough to give, make them all ten. But if we'll do that, if we'll step out of our comfort zone, it's comfortable to not say anything. It's uncomfortable to say something because here's the truth. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna ask people to come to church with you and you're going to get turned down more times than not. But that's okay. God didn't, God, God's not looking for the, for, for the result. He's looking for what you put into it. Amen. There was the one guy who got all that. That One of them had five talents. One of them had two. And one got one. And the one that got one, he didn't do anything with it. He just stuck it in the ground. The five got multiplied because of his effort with what he had, not because he made a big return on it. It was his faithfulness. And we got these bags in the back for you as you go out and we eat today. And there's one more thing in there. Actually, there's, hey, I got two of these in this bag. Here you go, Dale. I'll go ahead and give you one. There's some candy in here. There's some candy, too. I want to talk about fourth year faith. Put them up. Fourth year faith. Adam. Fourth year faith, buddy. Man, it's hard to get out of here. How many mustard seeds? Four. Four. No, there's four. Becca made them up, and I was like, hey, I need you to put four mustard seeds in there instead of one. So said, without messing up, because it only takes one. I was like, yeah, but this is fourth year. <laughs> this is, this is, fourth year faith's different than first year faith. First year faith is, is you realize that you've lost it all and there's, there's nothing you can do about it and you, and you trust in what Jesus has done for you. That's first year faith. It's free. It costs you nothing. But fourth year faith costs you everything. Adam got us to the end of third year faith last year in his message or last week in his message. See, Joshua, as he's beginning to go in, he's out there, and, and, and Moses has passed on, and he's gone, and God says, now you're going to take these people. I've put everything in you that you need. Now you're going to lead these people into the promised land, and he had some stupid plans by human standards of what he was going to do. They were going to go in, but they had to cross the Jordan. And if you know anything about when they had to cross the Jordan, it was the time when the floodplains were the highest. And God said, now it's time. And Joshua said, okay, guys, we're going in, but here's the plan. Well, here's the plan. The priests and the Levites, they're going to get the Ark of the Covenant. They're just going to go stand in that rushing water. And as they stood there, the Lord stopped the current. And just like they had done before, they walked over on dry ground because the Lord did it. Well, they weren't done. We think when we get to the place we're going, that's the end of it. That was first year faith. They get in there. Actually, that was that's probably third year faith because they came out of Israel and all that. But then they get in there. They're going to take Jericho. What did God tell them to do to take Jericho? We're going to walk around. Six days we're going to do it, and then on the seventh we're going to do it seven times. Oftentimes in our faith life we get stuck on six, and we stop there. Because... The seventh day cost a whole lot more. The, the first six days, they only had to go out and walk around one time. But the seventh day, they had to do it seven times. And then they had to get the worship band out there. And they had to blow the trumpet and blow the horns. And then the walls yeah. fell down. Yeah. Not because of what they did, but because of their obedience. Yes, sir. 
That's the end of third year faith. You're like, what? There's more? Yeah, there's a lot more. Because on the other side of that wall was a battle. There was a war to be fought. See, Moses was a diplomat. Joshua was a warrior. If you read between Joshua chapter 6 and chapter 13, there are 32 kings that Joshua had to go in and defeat to conquer, to possess the land. The problem with the Americanized Christian faith that we think that on the other side of the wall there's a, a lounge chair with an umbrella cocktail that we can kick back up and listen to the warm, soft waves rush in and it just makes us feel so good. That is not what is on the other side of the wall. That is not is what is on the other side of the breakthrough. On the other side of the breakthrough is work. Right. On the other side of the breakthrough is getting dirty. On the other side of the breakthrough <laughs> is a problem. When the walls fall down, there's a problem on the other side of the wall. Not a blessing. There's blessing there, but you got to go through hell to get it. Fourth year faith. This year's the, we're standing in a crossroad right now. And then for year four, we're either going to step up and step into what God's called us to. Or not. See, Israel stood at a crossroad after the guys went into that land. And at the crossroad, they chose to die in the wilderness. Here's what you may not know about this story. We all hear about it and we say, God promised Abraham this land flowing with milk and honey. But it was actually Abraham's father that God called first. He was living in the land of Ur and God called him to go to Canaan. <coughs> Same land. And Terah... Is Abraham's father. You can read it in Genesis 11, the last few verses. He's called to go to this land, and he stops in the middle at Hanan, and he dies right there. Hanan is actually Abraham's sibling brother that died at a young age. See, oftentimes we stop in the middle on the dream that God has in our hearts. It dies prematurely. Because we're not willing to step out in faith. We're not willing to, to take on the pain. Fourth year of faith, guys, put your hands up. Fourth year. Say fourth year. Fourth year. Y'all know what this means? I know the guys do. Any of the ladies know what this is? Four. Anybody know what it is? Mario, what is it? Fourth quarter. Look on the football field. They'll start the fourth quarter. They'll get, they don't know this in Atlanta. That's why I said that <laughs> early in the service. But you'll get out there and the fourth quarter starts. They'll get their hands up because what that means is we're tired. We're hurting. We're struggled. We've been beat up for three quarters, but we're going after it. We're going to get it. We're not going to stop. We're going to go get the touchdown. We're going to win this thing. And it's going to take everything that we've got to do it. Look at how many games come down to the last moment. Amen. But it's because those who went hard, those who didn't stop, those who went in, with fourth year faith, let's bow our heads. Maybe you're here this morning and you haven't made the decision to trust Christ for salvation. Today can be that day for you. Maybe you sat around and you looked at your friends and somebody brought you here and you're like, yeah, that's good, but, but I don't know about all that. But, well, here's the thing. Because of Adam and Eve's sin, we've all sinned. We are all born with sin, and we all have fallen short of God's glory. I don't have to convince you of the fact that you have the tendency to do wrong things. You convict yourself enough of that on the daily. But the good news is that Jesus came, and he lived a perfect life, and he died on a cross, and he was buried, and he rose again on the third day for you and I. If we put our faith and our trust in him, we can have eternal life 
not because of what he's done for us or not because of what we've done for him but because of what he's already done for us yes. maybe that's you and you're here today and you just want to trust him and you say Lord Jesus I know that I'm a sinner right now the best that I know how I'm asking you to come into my life draw me back to you Lord save me and help me from this moment on to live for you maybe you're here today and you already made that decision and you're at a place in your life where you settled if that's you every head bowed every eye closed just slip your hand up if that's you you feel like maybe you've settled somewhere come on let's be honest we're people and nobody's looking around Jesus I pray for the hands in this room right now Lord Jesus that you would give them the courage to look fear in the face and step out anyway Lord, I pray you would give them the courage to, when the enemy comes up and they say, yeah, you're not that, you're, you're, you're worth it. No, 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 I'm brand new, I'm redeemed, I'm alive in Christ. I have everything that I need. I'm more than a conqueror. Help them, Lord Jesus. Father, help them to become more like you so that you can be lifted up and glorified right here. In Henry County, Georgia, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you guys so much for joining us this morning. You guys appreciate that word this morning? Was that for anybody? Yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Just a couple of reminders again. If it's your first time, please make sure you uh, text the word new to that number that I mentioned earlier. If you need to pray with somebody, if you need to talk with somebody, if you need to dialogue, we're going to have leaders available at the end of service. We're going to be right here down front, so please do not leave before you come grab somebody. Uh, we are here for you, okay? So please make sure you do that. We've got free lunch, Daryl. Okay, we got free lunch. Daryl always likes to, like, to act like you don't know what's going on, so i got to tell Daryl specifically every time. But we got free lunch, Daryl. So please make sure you stay and hang out for that. Um, we will make those arrangements very, very quickly after service, and so please, 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 please make sure you stay for that. We are really, really excited. Thank you guys so much for joining us. You guys are officially dismissed, but don't go anywhere because we got free lunch. Thank you guys so much. <laughs>